I know today there are not many people because it's the first day, yes. Mm. But I came because some people already came here before and because of the news they stay. If I didn't come today, I could come tomorrow. The, the ones who just came today would probably stay a few more days. But the people who have already stayed longer, maybe they couldn't stay much longer. So I came. How, how, how many people stay longer before today? Last week? Some? No? All gone? Uh, one. Only one? I thought it was supposed to be like 20 or 30 people. All left already? Ah, never mind. Okay. Next time. Next life. <laughs> Whatever. So um, nowadays, we're supposed to have democracy and religious freedom and everything. I don't know. I'm still running like Jesus' time. Mm. Oh, Prophet Muhammad's time. Peace be upon him. Yes. You have to say that if you mention the name of the Prophet mm. in front of Muslims. Otherwise, they think you don't have respect. It's not true. We just don't understand it. That's all. But I just hope that it's getting better, you know? It probably will. If it doesn't, okay, I'm getting more and more expert <laughs> at running. <sighs> Sometimes I couldn't run fast enough, and that is why they caught me, you know, in the house or in other areas, yeah? You can't just always avoid it, even if you know. If if the karma is too heavy, the price has to be paid. Yeah, so it's better if nobody knows my name and where I live. Nowadays, if you know names, you can check everybody where they live. And it's called tracking, yeah? Even they can track you through the phone that you use, the mobile phone. Even if the phone is anonymous or uh, in some other person's name. Yeah, because of the stuff I talk about. <laughs> and sometimes I tell them, don't say master or anything on the phone. Okay, then fine, fine. And then later, I talk in the third person, you know. I say, uh, your sister tells you to do this, to do that. So please do it. And then, and then yeah, I understand. And then, thank you, master. <laughs> <laughs> Useless, you know? It's really useless. <laughs> no use. Because you guys are too safe. Yeah? Every little pimple on your face, you pray to Master and then it's <laughs> fixed. <laughs> it disappears. <laughs> Even if you have an accident, you have no scratch, nothing. You don't understand me. You don't understand my trouble and that I'm in danger. Yeah? You don't understand that I need to be more private and anonymous. You don't mean to be bad or anything. You're just used to it, you know? You're so happy to talk to me and you, you just leak it out all the time, <laughs> even if you don't want to. Besides, your karma from past life as enemies is always popping up unexpectedly all the time. Even if you don't want to, the subconscious is still working and the karmic connection is still there. So, I can never win. <laughs> I just have to take care of myself. It's difficult, but I'm trying my best. Just for you, eh? for the world. Uh, because dying, it doesn't matter much anyway, sooner or later, right? It's not that, but I have to keep myself alive for a while, no? Yes. Hmm? Mm. I keep myself alive, maybe over a hundred. More than a hundred years old. I mean, total. <laughs> Not from now, one hundred more years. I have no more teacher. I don't know what I have to do. Huh? <laughs> The physical body is not able to sustain always the, the environment, you know, the pollution and everything. Okay, any more good stories? Except beautiful, anything else? <laughs> you want to say something? Well, no. there's, yes? there's a lot on the internet at the moment, Master, about the ascension of the planet in 2012, in December. In what? The, the planet going to a higher level of consciousness. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And there, yeah. there's a huge movement of people that are 
putting uh-huh. information on there and everyone's getting tell me, tell quite me. excited. It seems like a really positive thing. Oh, gosh. Um, people's level of consciousness is going to suddenly accelerate so uh-huh. fast yes. that the planet is going Except to... Except for my assistants, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody seems to be so good. The taxi driver, you know, Apple vendor, everybody seems to be higher and higher. How come my assistants are stuck? Oh. Whoever nearby me, just stuck there. No matter how I clean, how I... <laughs> all kinds of means to clean, and they seem stuck. Just for me. <laughs> yes, tell um, me, love. Yeah, and there's been a lot more UFO sightings since uh, the beginning of this year. Mm. Again, people are getting excited, they're thinking... December 2012? Yeah, this... this what about that? Well, they're saying the planets... Oh, that's the time to ascend? Yes, the consciousness, yes, not the, the planet. Well, yeah. Yeah. I mean the whole consciousness yeah, the whole mass of the planet. Consciousness yes, of the yes. planet. Yes, yes, yes. So, getting better, of course. Well, we hope. Yes. I, I yeah. bump into vegan people everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> I went to the supermarket to buy a belt, you know, because I lost some weight at one time and my trousers is <laughs> falling off. <laughs> And uh, I didn't want to keep going to buy new trousers. I'm small, they are difficult to buy. So I just bought a belt and I asked for a vegan. She gave me something and I said, it looks like leather, I don't want it. I'm, I'm vegan. And she said, me too. <laughs> <laughs> this is vegan, it's just fake uh, leather. Yes, that's one thing. And then I went to another supermarket and I, uh, I bought some bread. Yeah, And then uh, the vendor of the bread I saw her handling some meat on the other counter. I said, please, uh, maybe you change your, your gloves if you have touched the meat because I'm vegan. And she said, no, no, this is only for bread. My daughter is vegan and I eat very little, very little uh, meat now. I'm going slowly, slowly, she said. I said, yeah, go slow and quick. <laughs> 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 and then later, she helped me to find other vegan stuff. Very nice, yes. It's just like that, you know. Many other times, I bump into like vegan stewardess, uh, pilots, all the time. Yeah. Yes. Seems like the movement is really going upward. Yes. That's why I told you we saved the planet this is longer time. Longer time. Long, long, long time. How much, Master? Huh? <laughs> How many more years? Up to now? Twenty. <laughs> If I had not been so beaten up, you know, all the time and disturbed and made to run, it would have been 200 years by now. Oh. The way I meditate, the way I put my all into it, is not just meditation, it's your passion, your energy, your intention, your all, you know? But tell that to my assistant. <laughs> Never mind. I can't blame them. Just too ignorant. The ego and the ignorance, the uneducation, the uneducated lifestyle, spiritually, yes? Spiritually. So much ego, arguing all the time. My God, but I need, I can't keep changing to become my dog. People, they get used to one person. If assistants keep changing all the time, they go kaput. Also, I have to clean them for a while, huh? Until they're ready, huh? Yes. That's the thing. The world's karma, you know, makes it I cannot even change them. Just like if you have very bad karma, even if you go to the best doctors, they can't heal you. Even if you have the right medicine, it doesn't work. It's like that. I knew it last time when I was sick, so many doctors, nobody could figure out what was wrong with me until I suffer, suffer, suffer so much that I could hardly walk. I was almost paralyzed already. And then I had an operation. And then it took two years to be the way I am today, that I can walk well, run down the staircase, up the staircase, yes. No problem, like normal, like normal. Mm. Before it was such a pain. Even though I had been to many doctors and, oh, that's another story you don't know. Well, maybe I save it for next time. <laughs> <laughs> then I tell you everything, then the next batch hears nothing. <laughs> <laughs> tell Timmy 
you beautiful again. <laughs> <laughs> but how about if the next batch tells me that I'm not only beautiful but elegant then? Yeah. <laughs> then I have to tell them a lot more stories. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, when I was sick, I was in another country and I was in trouble already because the police were checking, thinking that we were doing drugs or whatever they are imagining was, or whoever reported it, uh, with a bad intention to harm us, yeah? So I had to run already. I couldn't even stay there. I couldn't even have many attendants, just one or two, you know. And especially I could not have too many Chinese around. <laughs> it's too obvious, no? In some places, they don't have that many Chinese, so we be the only ones, you know. It would be very like a sore thumb, huh? Uh, so I went to a doctor, but I could not even give my name. I had to make up a name. In some places, okay, but some places not. But then uh, since uh, one place was okay, at least I could use that to go to another place. I look, oh, it's okay, you know. And if they asked for ID, then I had to change doctors. But then when I was operated, I had to stay many months in the hospital. And every day my heart pumped. Because they would come up and ask, and then I had to say one story after another. You know, and then they were yelling at me, screaming at me, telling me that I'm bad and all that. Why don't I have my passport? Why, what, what, what? They were just screaming and yelling at me all the time. Well, I was sick with bandages here and there and everywhere. I could hardly walk, could not even get up from the bed without excruciating pain. And they were yelling at me all the time. And with the neighbors, uh, you know, screaming, some were mental, you know, they kept saying, potato, potato, <laughs> potato, all night long. <laughs> and the other one was crying, mama, mama, mama because they, they thought I was mental or <laughs> something. Because I couldn't walk, they thought it had something to do with the nerves, so of course they put me in the neural area. But the neural area is not always just neural, it's neurotic. <laughs> and I heard all kinds of talk all day, all night, I could not even rest. Apart from being harassed by the, you know, the administration, Everybody looked at me with funny eyes, you know. But the doctors were kind and the nurses were understanding, just not the administration. They could not understand why I could not produce my ID. <laughs> well, and then, uh, because sometimes I went out, I had to disguise. And under operation, you can't. So they say, how come you were different when you came in and now you're like this? So they, they had more suspicion. And they really gave me a hard time while I was sick. I was already very, very sick. And I had to deal with all this, you know, uh, trouble. I couldn't even leave the hospital. I was so sick. If I went, I die. Even in the car, it was really killing me. While well, somebody drive me to hospital, even just a little bum like this was killing me. It was so painful, painful. And if I went back to England or anywhere safer, I would die on the airplane from pain. Even painkillers didn't help. And I could not even take many more painkillers than I already had because they would immobilize your muscles and harden your arteries. Apart from all the antibiotics that they wrongly prescribed to me because I didn't even know what was wrong with me. And then they thought it was cancer, but it wasn't. It was just different, just a very painful, painful. And then after the operation, it got better, but I could not walk. <laughs> after the operation, the first thing the doctor asked me, because he operated here, you know, inside, so it was very dangerous. <laughs> The most dangerous moment was the operation time. It wasn't when I was sick or after or before. It was the most dangerous time because I could die then. Anything could happen. It was a very dangerous procedure. They told me afterward, thank you ever so much. <laughs> told me after, not before. <laughs> but I did know that, so before that I was very, very scared because I could also never wake up again you know, in the middle of my job. Huh? Oh, something could happen. 
So the first thing the doctor asked me was, uh, do you see me? I said, yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Can you talk? Yes. <laughs> because he was worried that I would lose my voice. I was worried also. <laughs> so he said, then you okay. <laughs> he said, thank, thank heaven. <laughs> he, thank heaven. <laughs> I couldn't even thank because I went through so much suffering after the operation also. Because they connected all kinds of machines to all over my body. And because of that, they didn't allow the room to be warm. I don't know why. The room was so cold, and that made my pain worse. And they didn't give me painkillers. But the painkiller, even if they give, they cannot give too much in my situation. Yeah? And the room was so cold, I sneaked in some warm bag, you know, and they just took it away. They said, cannot do this. It's too dangerous. They worried the blood would boil over or something, and the, the wound would bust or something. Because of the cold, it's very terrible. It's very terrible. It's not just make you in pain, it makes you restless. And I was supposed to stay still. I, I should not move. And how do you keep yourself still when you feel like you want to jump out of the window and run all over because it's like ants all over your body and something inside you keeps pushing you. That was the worst time of my life ever. What was wrong with you, Master? I cannot tell you. Secret. I got an infection from one of your sisters. One of the rare diseases. Transmitted by talking, by being near. Mouth, and, uh, I mean saliva and stuff. Yes, I'm okay now. I mean, I'm really okay now after all this time. I still have pain sometimes, but I know I'm okay. I, my health is good. Before, I thought life is forever. <laughs> I'd probably never get well. It seems like that, you know? Even if you take medicine, it seems like forever. <laughs> this was a very difficult disease, okay? rare, yes. Okay, never mind, that's enough, you know? I don't want to tell you. <laughs> even at one time, you know, I asked you guys to wear masks, even then I knew it, but it was still unavoidable. Somehow it sneaked in, into my life at home, <laughs> you know, avoidable here, but I can't avoid it at home. Sometimes I just do it, you know, just like that. Okay, I don't want to mention from whom either, okay? I don't want to mention what, yeah, it's good enough that you know like that. It was a terrible time to try to hide your ID and have to stay in the hospital to, to know what's wrong with you and then to have an operation and you can't run anywhere. If I run, I have to go to another hospital. And another hospital doesn't have that equipment in that area. For some special equipment, you have to go to some special place. And so in that area, it will be the same. <laughs> the same ID problem. So every day I was just thinking, okay, maybe this is my last day. Maybe the police will bust in any time now, any minute now. I'm just waiting for it. I just said, whatever happens, what can I do? Just somehow... I was protected, and I'm fine. <laughs> they yell at me, scream at me, but they didn't do much. And until the last day, when I went in to pay the money, then the, the woman at the secretary at the reception yelled at me again. I said, I just come to pay, but you have to give me the passport. And I said, why? I don't have it here. Please, I just want to pay. And then she started yelling at me again. Before you look different, now you look different. I say a lot of things I didn't even understand her language so well. But I know she was yelling, that's for sure. It was very loud, everybody heard it. So the chief of the administration, I guess he's the chief, somehow heard her. Everybody would hear it from miles away. She was so loud. And what could I do? I was just, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, really, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. I just want to pay and then go, you know. But she kept yelling nonstop. She wouldn't accept money even. She just say, I want your passport. And then she got somebody translating into English and French and whatever, telling me passport right now. 
And then the chief called her in somehow, and, and she took me and the driver in as well. I don't know what the chief said to her, uh, but one look at me and he was saying something to her, and then she came out. Her attitude changed 180 degrees. She was just smiling at me and said, when are you going back to England? <laughs> <laughs> Why? <laughs> no more passport, nothing. And then she even accepted my gift afterward. Before she was thinking that I'm a criminal, uh, because when I go somewhere, I always bring a little gift, you know? And she didn't want it, even. She was kind of, oh, she was yelling so loud. <laughs> ah, I didn't know what to do. I just kept saying, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> you know? And I was so painful, so sick. There was bandage everywhere, and, and still she was yelling at me. I guess the chief took one look at me and was feeling so sorry for the little girl, you know. My driver, he's about five, six feet something high, and I'm very small, and he's tough and strong, and I'm little <laughs> compared to him. And probably he took a good look at me and he felt such a sorry woman, you know, bandage everywhere, and I couldn't even talk well, and, and the stomach everywhere, and couldn't even walk and then got yelled at like that. So he said something to her, and she took me out, and immediately she changed. I was so surprised and relieved, of course, you know. I didn't know what he told her. Probably he said, well, just take her money, that's all you need. <laughs> all, all we need is money, right, to pay for the staff and medicine, doctors, that's all they need. What the heck do you need my passport for? Yeah? And the worst would be, if they don't take that money, I would just run away. <laughs> right? So he said, just take her money. <laughs> Maybe it was like that, before she ran away. <laughs> well, if it was somebody else, they would have pretended to be angry or get angry or scared and then go away and don't ever come back again. But I was just too good. I even came back again to make sure that everything was paid because after that there were some more visits, follow up, you know, yes. And the scan, uh, sometimes the scan is very expensive. They call it something? Some T-scan or something? Cascan. Not CAT scan. Huh? CT scan. So you scan the whole body, you know? And you have to stay still. And first they put some blue thing in your body, a blue uh, medicine something, so, so that they can see well. And you have to drink a little water first. And I could not even climb on there. And they were so rough, they just <laughs> push you in there. They don't understand your pain. They didn't know that I had so much pain. They could not understand. Also because the doctor gave the wrong medicine. Therefore, it didn't help me at all, so the pain continued. And they took me from one room to another, all kinds of scans, all kinds of tests, always. And then put me on a bed here, bed there, and I could, I could hardly, I, I'd rather die. You know, I'd rather die because it was so painful. And because they didn't know what was wrong with me yet, so they could not just keep giving too much of anything, you know, just give antibiotics and painkillers, but it didn't help in that situation. It just made it worse. It stiffened my body more, and then it, it was terrible. I couldn't even eat or anything. <laughs> and the worst thing was that I was worried about the ID. I was really protected because laying so long in the hospital. <laughs> but of course, I changed to another two or three hospitals. But still, you lay for at least many weeks in the hospital and still I worried. Okay, let's meditate or I will have to go home, huh? Okay? Any more questions, stories to keep me alive here? Yeah, later, love. Yes. Tell me. Yeah, uh, I want to thank you first, Master, for inviting us. Oh. Inviting you? <laughs> Did I write an inviting oh, letter? I applied, but um, although all the risk and the dangerous situations. Huh? Um, you the risk, in a dangerous situation? I mean, you've, you, oh, have, yeah, you have to come. I'm used to it. Thank you I so much. I don't mind dangerous situations if I can come see you. Sometimes I can. That's a problem. Not the problem of danger, it's the problem of cannot. Yeah? You're welcome. Yes, thank you. And um, I hope it's funny. Uh, I have, um, I adopted a cat recently. Mm. And 
And I rescued him a while ago um, with some other sisters. Yeah. And I couldn't adopt him um, right away, so I was looking for others to adopt him. Uh -huh. But no one showed up, um, no one was aw and available. Then? So he was kind of depressed. So what happened now? Um, Just come right to the end. Did you adopt him? Yes, I okay, did. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I was scared that you throw him out. <laughs> <laughs> and since um, I wanted him to be more happier, I named him Happy yeah. after your dog. And uh, he started eating a lot. Yeah? Yes, like, <laughs> like your dog. Uh -huh, he's happy. <laughs> yes. Is he fat? Yeah, a lot. <laughs> Did the doctor say he's fat? Yeah, he, he said sort of he's healthy, yeah. He's healthy, then he's fine. It doesn't matter if he's fat. But later I found out all the other cats who named Happy, they all eat a lot. Yeah? Yeah. Of course they do. Like my dog, people. Yeah, yeah. Especially Happy, she eats a lot. And the doctors say go on the diet, fine. I put her on the diet, but after diet she eats more. <laughs> <laughs> then she is all the same. Or she goes and takes the food from other dog people <laughs> when I'm not looking. Yeah? Or she goes wow, and eats a nonsense, and I'm worried even more. So lately, uh, the doctor found out that she has the thyroid problem, and that's why she's fat, not just the food. So give her medicine, and she's very <laughs> model like now. <laughs> but still eats it a lot. Yeah. Anything I eat, she likes to eat, even if it's no good for her. I say, no good for you, please. Not because I don't want to give you, but it's not too good. She says, never mind. <laughs> good for you, good for me. <laughs> so eat. Sometimes I feel sorry for, for her also because... Oh, she has his food. She has no boyfriend, nothing anymore. <laughs> and she's old now. I never know when she goes, you see? So it's a short life. If she enjoys it, why not? She enjoys it. As long as she's in a dog person whose life, I want her to enjoy. Yeah, enjoy also. Not just always discipline and not this, not that. And dog people's lives are already so limited. And because they live with me, sometimes uh, I like to be clean. So we have to clean them many times. Whenever they go out, we clean them so that they can come in, inside the house. Yeah. Because they be all over on my bed, my sofa, everywhere. And printing everywhere, paws, if we don't clean. Flowers, of <laughs> paws, flowers everywhere. So we clean them, also for, for health's sake, you know? Uh, they don't always like that, of course. It's, it's a kind of hassle a little bit, no? To lift your legs up, clean them four times, you know? But I devised eh, a new system. I told the attendant, don't mess with it too much. Because originally, when there are a lot of assistants, it's also okay, you know. But when only one, then I tell you, don't, don't bother too much. Just uh, clean them once with uh, vinegar, yeah. And then uh, with water again, if you can. If it's too busy, don't bother, yeah. As long as it's vinegar, it's fine. Or I'll use vinegar for one or two days only, not every day. Other days, just water, so clean. And now we just do like this. Of course, they have to wash the dog people's paws when they come in because of mud, you know? Yes. yes. Otherwise, they will, they will print their paws everywhere, you know, and we can't keep washing. Also, for environmental protection, if you keep washing, there's a lot of detergent everywhere. And water is also precious, yeah? So because of that, we clean the dogs. Because if we don't clean the dogs, then we have to wash the sheets all the time. If we don't clean the dogs, people, then we have to wash the sheets all the time. You see, we, uh, their beds, we cover with bed sheets, you see? So that we can wash them easily when they're dirty. Because the dog beds are difficult to wash and difficult to clean. So we cover them with bed sheets so they're always clean. Yeah, and we, we change them every week or every 10 days or before that. It depends on how, how dirty or how busy or the situation, yeah? But at least change, yes. Maximum two weeks, you see? Maximum, that's the most dirtiest time, <laughs> two weeks. And now we do this. I'm just telling you also, so maybe if you have dog people at home and you want to clean them, it's easier. Don't, don't do the fanatic way like the way I did. <laughs> Because uh, I worry if we clean with vinegar and if we don't wipe again with water in the damp tower, then the vinegar might smart their eyes when they come in and, you know, 
how uh, say clean themselves with the paw. So it might smart, you know, the eyes might be smart. So we had to always wipe after the vinegar with a damp water towel. And now we don't do that. Uh, because first you have to wash the dog's paws. If it's uh, 10 dog people, how many paws? 40 paws. <laughs> That's a lot, okay? So now just wash the dog's paws and after that wipe with vinegar and after that wipe with water again. How many times? 120 times. Right? Yeah. <sighs> so I say, no, just wash their paws and then, uh, and then dampen the, the tower that they stand on outside with vinegar. Hmm? And the tower inside, one big tower inside, they walk on it. You see, they walk on the vinegar tower before they enter the house. When you're cleaning, then they enter the house. But the paws were already washed with water. And then they step on the vinegar tower and then you clean their body. And then they walk on the water tower, then they clean their underpaws. <laughs> so, <laughs> only 40 times. <laughs> if you have 10 dog people. I'm getting smarter, you know. Yeah. Actually, I can invent many things. It's just, I'm too busy, you know. I've been busy and sometimes I don't notice these things. But once I pay attention to things, I have solutions all the time. Always better solutions, all the time. Yeah. Cat. You okay now? Yes, yes. So why you tell me this? Because he eats a lot? Yeah, I thought it's funny. Huh? Yeah, it's because funny? yeah, because he his name is Happy. He eats a lot like your dog Happy. Yeah. So Ah, so you copy my yeah. copycat. <laughs> okay, never mind. If he's healthy, no problem. And if you can afford it, no problem. It's your problem only, yeah? <laughs> okay. Anything else? No, that's, that's yeah. Okay, this uh, angel here, beautiful. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you have your hair straight this time, huh? Yeah, last time it was curly, also nice, and, and your eyelashes, you know, you, you did something, it was very I nice. Did it just for you, Master. Yeah? Oh, man. I'm not lesbian, for your information. <laughs> for your information. I'm 100% mohair. <laughs> Yes. Hi, Master. Um, I was at the Veg Fest in Brighton on Saturday. It's for vegetarians and vegans. It's yeah. a big festival, and uh -huh. there was a lot, a lot of people. Where? Um, it was a lot, in, a lot in, of people. A lot of people. Yeah. Where? In in Brighton. On Brighton. Okay. And, um, then what happened? And um, there was a lot of people inquiring about the meditation practice, and it was really uh, wonderful to know that most of the people there are vegan, more than vegetarian. Yeah. And um, I was wearing one of the Go Veg, I was wearing this one. Be Veg, Go Green stuff. And so many people want to ah, buy And remind sweaters. me, I put it here for show. Yes. <laughs> and so many people want to buy the sweaters. There was even one lady who wanted to get initiated uh -huh. so that she could have access to buying a sweater. Wow. <laughs> And there was also um, a gentleman who'd appeared on SMTV. He was um, from a bear sanctuary, and you'd given a donation, and he hmm. was uh, talking to us. Yeah, the, um, the by bears. Hmm? I think so. He had curly hair. I don't know him, but I know this organization. Yes. Sometimes I, I missed it, or sometimes I don't remember the person. Yes. Just the organization I remember. Yes. And what happened to him? He stopped by to talk to us because he was so, so grateful for the oh. donation. And he said he I couldn't... I wish I could do more. Yes. He said he couldn't even believe that somebody yeah. was just freely coming along giving a donation like that. He thought, is there something wrong with this? Who just comes along and just What's, gives money. That's so we're supposed to do. Do some show or something before we give. <laughs> well, it, he's that's what I do all the time. <laughs> yeah, okay. Well, do they still do that? Still so, do the job, huh? Yeah, yeah. Uh, tell her to give them 10,000 more US dollars. So they continue their job, okay? Okay. You give 10,000, okay? Pounds, not dollars, because they're in England, right? In England? Yeah, it's in England. Okay. In England, US money is nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Very low, low value. Okay? Can you write and tell her that? 10,000 pounds for that... Uh, the bear people, they cage them and, and take the Bible out of them. It's very painful. And I cry a lot when I saw it. I cannot bear it. I screamed. Terrible. Imagine if it's you. Yeah? 
Sometimes I see the things that humans do in this world. I'm just speechless, you know. It's so painful, I could not even talk about it. So painful. Just so ignorant, you know. So much ignorance, that's why. We do our part, just make everything go up. Up in consciousness. The more good we do, the higher consciousness, the world will climb up. It has a chain effect, you see? Yes. Chain effect. Even if we suffer a little bit or a lot, just do it, huh? All of you and myself, of course. So what else is there? Um, there was also um, a brother who went out for a walk outside the Veg Fest and he met um, Caroline Lucas. She's the leader of the Green Party yeah. in, um, in the UK. And she's, uh, known, yeah, yeah. she's known as a vegetarian, but mm -hmm. he spoke to her and she's actually vegan. It's mm. just for political reasons. Um, she yes. just advertised that she's vegan, so it was... Yes, yeah, so? so what happened now? Well, it's just great to find out that she's actually a vegan and not a, just ah. a vegetarian. Oh, so, it's even better. Yeah. Sometimes I, I'm worried people don't understand that I'm vegan, what it means. Just like the lady whom I bought the bread from, I said, I'm vegetarian, I don't eat animal people, because sometimes I talk in another language, um, it's, it's not that clear. You see, not like English. It's not English. So I have to tell her that I'm vegetarian. Because vegetarian is an international name. Huh? And, but I said, I don't eat animal people at all. And not milk, not eggs, nothing coming from animal people. So please, if your glove has animal people, meat on it, please change it. So she said, oh, no, it's only for bread, don't worry. And my daughter also, uh, she's vegan. Then I said, oh, you know, I'm vegan too. <laughs> See what I mean? I was just too happy to tell her that. And even on the road, I meet people all the time. If you mention it, they will tell you. If you don't mention it, sometimes you don't know, you know. Mm -hmm. So it's good news. What else is there? Yeah, that's, that's what I can think of for now. Okay, wonderful. Yes. Good enough already for me. Another one there, she wants to talk. Yeah, quick, quick, quick. Move it, baby. Don't meditate on the Michael. <laughs> Hi, Master. Hi. <laughs> Thank you for everything that you do, and it breaks my heart to hear all those stories. Always pass already, honey. Yeah, man. but I'm happy you're very healthy. <laughs> uh, happy, healthy now, yes, and beautiful. And very, very beautiful, and very elegant. <laughs> elegant. <laughs> okay, I'll tell you another story later. <laughs> I'll just, just stay here all night. <laughs> yeah. I, um, yeah. I have lots of good news. I uh, tell me. I worked at Farm Sanctuary last year, all mm -hmm. of last year. The um, the animal sanctuary in New York and in California. Yes. And they are all vegan. Mm -hmm. And um, they were organizing the um, national uh, conference to end factory farming in D.C., which they had last fall. Yeah. And um, it was a very big success. We were there, and all uh, the you know our mm. group and a lot of different other groups. Mm -hmm. And um, our national director, the shelter director, Susie Costin, she actually um, they went to Loving Hut after the conference, uh -huh. and she knew that I was a part of uh, the Supreme Master, and she was she was watching uh, SMTV and was like, "Oh, I hope this woman takes over the world." <laughs> <laughs> because she knows that you do good and it yes. was just it made my heart very very happy oh, okay yeah. and i also i worked as a tour guide there and so i talked to a lot of people and more and more people are becoming vegans and yeah. it's just very heartwarming yes yes if you are out there just keep spreading the news yeah yes that's exactly even right. if uh, nowadays you know it's getting better really you know yeah. somehow people have this consciousness about it like, even if you go into a non-veg restaurant, I always ask about vegans. <laughs> I tell, all right, I don't eat any eggs, any milk, any animal person product, even a little bit of fish sauce or anything in there cannot. And they really understand it. A long time ago, if I asked about that, they would just like pull their face at you or, or laugh or, or try not to understand or just shrug their shoulders or something, you know? Nowadays, it looks like they're with you. Yes. Yes, and then even if you order some sauce, order something with sauce, and they say that sauce would have pork in it, and also they will tell you. They don't laugh at you, and they don't try to make you feel like uh, you're from another planet or something. <laughs> <Huh? Yeah. laughs> it's very good now, it's very I good. feel, yes? 
I mean, I don't go out that often, but whenever I do, I feel like people have changed. Hmm? You have the same earrings that I do? You know that I'm going to wear this today? <laughs> <laughs> yes, love? Next one, yeah. Come on, keep telling me all these beautiful stories. It's untangled, eh? Yes. Actually, there's a lot of awakening in China regarding the bell farm. And recently, one a company, they, they farm the bell and they want to go public to be listed on the stock market so they can raise more money. And then all the people from celebrity to the animal protection NGOs, they all write on the newspaper and uh -huh. then they all all come to against this company and because this company is applying for the um, security committee to get the approval. To approve it, yes. Yeah, so all the people, celebrities, they write on the newspaper, the, the major newspaper, they mm. write about this. Yes. They say, well, if we, we allow this kind of things happen, then more bears will be will be harmed. Be gone, yeah, harm and, and yeah. extinct maybe. And yes. then for this company, they want to be more transparent, so they have opened a, a micro blog in, uh, that is equivalent to the Twitter in China. Once they open, uh, many people go there and say, go out, go out, oh. we don't want you. Oh. So, so now That's a lot of people, they, they're against and then, that. And is that uh, successful? Uh, not yet, but it's still going. At least, yeah, and, at least uh, something and that and people, on, yes. Yeah, and even on the National People's Political Committee, there's a con consultation. A lot of members, they give the proposal, they say we should ban this, we should ban yes, this company. Yes, it's too cruel. Yeah. Too inhumane, too, too, just like hell. How can you, you make other beings suffer like this and feel nothing about it? Just for money. Yeah. <sighs> okay. Yeah. I'm glad. Yeah. Chinese people. Yeah, Chinese people. Chinese spring. Yeah. <laughs> awakening. This is a real awakening, yes? Not a revolution, not guns, not bloodshed, and not power seeking, but it's a real awakening. Yeah? It's good. Good to hear. Any other good news? <laughs> yeah, behind you. <laughs> But um, you tell the truth because um, people now, they already change a lot. They change a lot. Yeah, they change a lot. Um, you know, um, if love and heart, we cook very good and sell not very high, mm -hmm. so they eat a lot. Yes. We have one uh, restaurant in, in California, mm. LA Center, mm. in um, San Diego, always full house. Yes, you are from the San Diego restaurant? No, I'm, I'm not. Uh, in the beginning, I have there, yeah, but I'm busy for another Okay, okay program. another project. Good, yeah, good. but I'm very close to them because uh -huh. um, they, they always are, full, eh? They yeah. are always full. They will be here next week because I tell them come to rest because they work very tired now. I understand. You know, Saturday they sell $4,000. Oh, you know, very, One day. very cheap and I they're understand. very nice. Yes. And very fast. Yes. The people don't have time to come the way half an hour to yes, eat yes, for, yes. you know. For good food, yeah. Yeah, because not good, but some very slow. Mm -hmm. And that store, they know. And I, I told them that we very, very um, agree together because we opened a store. Mm. I told them um, every business want to make money to sell cheap. Yeah, must not sell, to sell cheap. Yeah, yes. sell cheap. And people are advertising yes, a lot of yes, people yes. come. Uh, you sell cheap, but you will sell a lot. Yeah, a but lot. But then you have to work hard on it. Yes. You sell cheap and good, and yes. one people come to eat, they go home to tell 10 tell more people. Tell other people, yes. And 10 more people tell 100 more people. Oh, good. Then you should be the manager or whatever of that restaurant. <laughs> no, no, I'm, I'm not manager, but you know. and uh, You just talk. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I talk. I have ideas to, to everybody. Say, okay, good, good. If you want to make money, don't sell expensive. Of course not. No, no, none of our loving hood should sell expensive. Normally we don't. But some store very slow matter. Uh -huh. When the customer come to wait for half an hour. Mm, no, no, to too eat. slow. Yeah, too slow. I know. The, 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 tell them they have to work like me. Tuck, 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 tuck. Yeah, yeah. I told them uh, when I came to love and her to help, I'm very hurry. You know, I, mm -hmm. you know, so people they work cut them line. Yeah, me. all the loving hood owners must work faster. Okay. Yeah. All right. We took your advice. Anything else? And another thing. <laughs> and another thing matter. Um, 
uh, um, who want to open loving heart have to learn to cook very good food. Yeah, I have to learn from the other loving heart. To know first before we open the store. And um, I want to say... Um, what they do? They do learn to, I, to I cook. I have the cooking show on, on, on television, <laughs> yeah? the Vietnamese uh, community. Vietnamese community, yes. In California, I, I cook. You know, in the beginning, I didn't want because my voice not very nice, so I don't want to come to the show. Uh -huh. And people told me, you only show them to cook, not yeah, to... Yeah, not to, to talk, not to sing. <laughs> That's right. So, so I, I do, I do, and very successful. Good. Yeah, a lot of people eat, uh, they cook. Yeah, then you should, should go work in one of the loving hood restaurants, because you cook very nice. You and she cook very nice. I, I don't think, but because I just depend on um, God, so so God help me. God cooks for you? <laughs> yeah. He didn't come cook for me. I eat lousy food every day. <laughs> Where is your God who cooks? I, I know inside, you know, you know, Master, when I didn't know the, the food, um, I decided to cook, for example, uh, Vegan turkey, I didn't know. I tried many times, three times, but not, 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 not successful. Not yes. good. I don't want to um, bring out to the show. And tomorrow the show come up, but now I didn't know how. <laughs> and right away, I know how right away. Mm -hmm. So because I, yes. I depend on God. So oh. God show me inside. Good God you have. Yeah. <laughs> and another thing, if we saw some um, in a show, or everybody we saw very clearly. You know, because I asked them why you don't eat mm, vegan before. They said they saw many shows on television, on, on uh, the internet, but they saw not very clear. Kai up, they don't want to... What show was not clear? Why? Um, because they saw the cook, the way you had to cook. You mean we, our no, no, show, no. or other... Uh, some, but other, somebody, yeah. Other shows, okay, yeah, okay. Other shows. Yes. Uh, they don't watch on um, MTV. Okay, okay. And when I show them, I show very, very clear. It's uh -huh. amazing. Of course, you're super. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I'm not super. I don't want, but I try, but I try. Yeah, understand, understand. I try, I try my best, you know. Yes. Because uh, be, before I bring the food out to cook, I, I cook first in mm -hmm. my house and mm -hmm. I eat. If uh -huh. not good, I don't, I don't do, and uh -huh. I do again. Yeah, understand. When, when I, I, exact, I, I know very good. I've been out. So people, um, you show, you made a very exact, very clear mm. how many cups, how many, um, how much uh, seasoning. Yeah, yeah. Oh, everything I see. exact. And the people, they don't know how to cook, they still can cook. Mm. How about you? Did you do that? <laughs> Did you cook well? Yeah. Yes? Well, I don't know about other restaurants, but some of the rest... different food from it's not an Asian food? Not Asian food? No, it's, it's much more... Much more Spanish? We do some Spanish, like paella, but uh -huh. it's lasagnas and curries and, mm -hmm. and wraps and things like mm -hmm. this. Not, not so much Chinese. Two stir-fry dishes. Yeah, two stir-fry dishes. Mm -hmm. So Maybe you should mm, well, change a little bit. They aren't busy at all. The Spanish don't seem to go for the Chinese food. Mm, I'm not sure about that. The Vietnamese food tastes very good, though. Yeah. Yeah. It's just the Vietnamese people, they're not very business-like, so they don't open restaurants everywhere like the Chinese. Also, they're smaller in number, you know? Chinese are billions of people, so <laughs> they spread all over, and wherever they go, they, they make uh, Chinese food uh, famous. But Vietnamese food is very tasty. Not because I'm Vietnamese, yeah? I love any kind of food if it's good. But uh, some of the restaurants, like one restaurant I know, you know, in Europe, uh, owned by Chinese though, owned by Chinese. The person who works there is a native European, but they went to another restaurant, uh, another loving hood, and they cooked some Vietnamese stuff. Oh, they make beautiful, like fresh uh, spring rolls, just like the Vietnamese do it. I was surprised. And it was made by the European person. And she had never cooked before. She just really learned well, the sauce and everything. I thought it was made by the Vietnamese. I said, but you told me this restaurant is uh, owned by Chinese and the person who cooks is European. She said, yes, yes, master, yes. I say, how come she cooks such beautiful Vietnamese food like this? They go and learn, Master. They went and learned ABC. And it was so lovely, really. Even one of my attendants, you know, she never cooked for me before. 
It was the first time she became my attendant just because she had a European resident who was more convenient. So by chance she came and she cooked for me just once or twice and I said, wow, so beautiful. It tastes so good. Where did you learn that? She said she learned it in a loving hood. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But she cooked only twice. Even despite my hint, she didn't ever cook again. <laughs> I don't know why. There's so much into raw and fruity tooties now. <laughs> I'm helpless. After I told you guys that I was on fruity tooties, I didn't want to look at fruits anymore. I don't know why. And now everywhere I turn, I am eating fruits now, master. I'm on fruit diet. I'm on raw diet. They took all my energy <laughs> for the fruits. And they eat all the healthy food, and now I have to eat the unhealthy food that they ate before. I have experience, but I never learn. You know, like before, whenever I cook something nice for myself, I mean, original, and I told the residents, for example, and then they made a DVD, of course, né? And after that, I didn't ever want to even look at that again. I look at the, the, the thing that I enjoy so much in those weeks or, or recent months, for example. And then, for example, like I told you guys that I enjoy uh, brown rice and sesame, you remember? And it was so easy, simple, nutritious, and good enough. After I told you guys, I don't even want to look at brown rice anymore. <laughs> I couldn't even bear sesame. Nada. I love sesame. I know you do. <laughs> Many of them do. And now it's all fruity tooties. <laughs> you know, like some Taiwanese residents came and sometimes helped me a little bit here and there. And then... Even though I didn't ask, they volunteered telling me. I eat fruits now, Master, only fruits, for example, like that, you know? I was thinking she or he might come to cook for me some old food that I, I used to love, you know, that I couldn't bother because there was so much preparation and no time, no mood. And then they said, I, I eat fruits, Master. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. After I told you about brown rice, and this center began to cook brown rice and even black rice and purple rice for everybody, remember? Yes. Yeah, why was that? And I told them, well, why do you have to? Huh? Why? You know, at that time, I told you that I was on brown rice and sesame because we didn't have time to cook. And that was simple for me. And it also tastes great. And if you can have a little bit of tofu now and then, also fine, or a little fruit. But then here in the center, they cook like a thousand dishes. So nutritious stuff, you know, tofu and tofu pao, tofu ki, tofu, uh, kan tofu, uh, uh, su tofu, uh, uh, and, uh, you know, all kinds of protein, yeah? Seitan this, seitan that, and all kinds of vegetables and everything. So no need to even eat brown rice. Of course you can, but no need to be all fanatic about it. Brown rice is not enough. Even put black rice, purple rice together. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I did that because the brown rice and sesame offer minimum nutrition enough for me to go on. But here so many things and so many vegetables already and so much protein already and still one extra brown rice and sesame and black rice. <laughs> My God. Please don't copycat, okay? have to be flexible and do it just original, okay? And, and have to do it the way it, like uh, it's necessary, not just copy everything master does or say. This is funny business. Hmm? And it looks silly and makes your IQ stand still. <laughs> ah, I'm telling you the things they do. Sometimes I just shake my head. I have no words to say anymore. For example, huh? okay. I have to move all the time. And one time I move into a house. Well, it's not in my name, of course. Sometimes I buy, but I cannot afford to put my name on it. I have nothing. <laughs> I don't even have a car in my name. I don't even have a house in my name. Everybody owns everything except me, even this hotel. It was my money, but I don't own any of it. I don't even own a piece of grass outside. Understand this? Yes. Yeah. Now. I moved into a new house, another house. And what happened? They bought me a refrigerator, a smaller one than the one they have in the kitchen, the old one, 
in the kitchen for the all uh, cooking. So they bought me a refrigerator and put my things in it. Originally, as I changed the, the refrigerator, because it was old. It was all rusty everywhere, number one, number two. They've been using it for decades with all meat and fish in it already, yes? And uh, the old model, it would cost a lot of electricity also, yeah? For all these reasons, I told them to buy a new refrigerator. But they didn't buy it. They bought a small one for me. I wanted a new refrigerator. I got it, about this big. They put it in the living room and still kept the old refrigerator. But I say, why? If, if you want to keep the old refrigerator, then there's still a lot of room even for my whatever in there together. Why have to buy a new one? You know, for me. And put my stuff in there, you know. I say, if you are here all together, like 10, 20 people like this, they were working in the house, so I came. If you are here, then I eat with you anyway. Yes? So I don't need my own refrigerator. And if you are not here, I just walk three steps into my own kitchen <laughs> and cook my own stuff. And there's no need for a separate refrigerator in my living room. It makes noise, it spends more electricity, and if people see it, they think I'm weird. Yeah. That's how people judge me all the time. Like sometimes I don't go out shopping and I don't know what kind of a toothbrushes they have. And they bought me one before, so I said, just buy this one. <laughs> because that's the only name I knew from a long time ago when I didn't go shopping that much, you know. And sometimes you go to a different country, you don't know what kind of different varieties or whatever. I know, I just say, go buy this. Just buy a toothbrush and I say, what kind? And I say, oh, maybe this one. And it's fine. And then they went all over the world just to search for that toothbrush and ignore every other thing. And so one of your brothers looked at that and criticized me in his head. He told me later, you know, I said, what kind of weird master is that? <laughs> Any toothbrush will do. Why? It has to be this one. I didn't know anything about it. I said, I'm sorry, I didn't really know. They just asked me what and they just showed him. Uh, toothbrush, I was worried they didn't understand what I wanted. They would buy me a, a broomstick or something. <laughs> Yeah, sometimes they do that, you know? You have to really tell them many times and make sure they repeat it. Otherwise, they buy completely different things. And then you'll be surprised. And now, oh, what else is there? Yes, that's one of the things. I get criticized all the time for the things I completely know nothing about. And another thing, one time, a long time ago, they built me a little house in Sihu, you know? I didn't ask for it. They built it, fine. Two stories, eh? one downstairs, one upstairs. And you know what they did? They built also an elevator. <laughs> Electrico. Muy bono. Yeah. Funciona. <laughs> you see? <laughs> they built it. Just from downstairs to upstairs. For me, yeah? For me. <laughs> and I said, take it off. <laughs> Demolish it. I said, why, Master? It's very nice, it's very good and fast. I said, how fast can it be? I can run upstairs faster than pushing a button and waiting. <laughs> why did you have to do that? I say, so you don't have to walk, Master? I said, I have legs, my God. <laughs> Imagine if somebody else knows about it, thinking I must be a handicap master or something. <laughs> or handicap here, you know, in my head. Cannot even walk a few steps upstairs. <laughs> Besides, walking up and down is very, very good for your health. Exercise, you know? You would be glad if you had a few steps to walk. You have an excuse to do it. Except when I was very sick, oh, I really appreciate it when I could run up and down the steps. When you cannot, you really understand then how valuable it is when you can walk up and down the stairs normally. So do walk if you can, yeah? Now. <laughs> When I was sick and almost paralyzed, I really appreciated it so much that all the time I spent in the office working, I should have been walking, running outside and enjoy the beach or walking in the sun and all that. And I say, oh my God, if I get healthy again, I will do that. But then I was buried in the work again. I had to be house arrested <laughs> myself because of something, not safe outside or for privacy. 
it's uh, difficult. Uh, no, why, why I'm telling all these things? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh? The refrigerator. The refrigerator and the elevator, no? The house is not as high as this even, you know? It's just a, a very short uh, thing, you know, very low. You could even just uh, step twice and you upstairs already. And have to have an elevator. <laughs> Well, I, say, I appreciate their kindness and thoughtfulness and spoiling me like that, but this is not helping me. If somebody knows about it, they will think I am handicapped in my brain. Yeah? How can I even not walk upstairs and take an elevator to go to the first floor? It's one floor only. No need. Many things like that I don't remember. Um, I want to say something I forgot already. Never mind. You take it. And then I might remember. Anybody else? Tell me the story? Yes? No? Master, can I tell you a silly little story? Yeah, tell me a beautiful joke. <laughs> silly little joke, tell me. Um, I have uh, two Cocker Spaniels, uh -huh. Ricardo and Luigi. They Since when? Um, it's nine years now that you I've You adopted had them? them? No. Actually, not adopted from the shelter, but mm. somebody oh, understand. didn't same, want to same. take them home, so it's I the same. took them, yeah. yeah. And um, they're both brothers from the same litter, and they're really very cute, and they're also vegan. Mm. And um, lately, my, my housekeeper, um, she's an African lady, she's um, trying to... Do you even to have a housekeeper? <laughs> I have week. one, but they only housekeeping for dog people. I have nobody. I had to cook for myself, wash my own clothes, clean my house. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she cooks for my dog. She makes their special food. Yeah. How about you? She doesn't cook for you? No, I oh. cook for myself. I, I yeah. clean the house and cook for dogs, right? Yeah. Better, but I had to clean my own house now. <laughs> and... Um, so she's trying to be vegetarian because I've been speaking to her, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so the housekeeper. The housekeeper. My housekeeper. Yeah. And she's also very religious. So she she's stay in your house? She lives outside of my house in her own room. In the same area? In yeah. the same yeah. property. Made house. The okay. same okay. ground. Yes. Oh, wow, you sound like a very, <laughs> very, very rich uh, muchacha. <laughs> Muchacha, mucho dinero. <laughs> so, so she prays in my garden under this tree that I have. Mm -hmm. And now for the last three or four weeks, Ricardo has been standing, sitting in this, the same area where she's been praying and mm -hmm. just sitting, Master, like as if he's seeing something. Mm -hmm. And then I say to him, Ricardo, baby, what are you doing? And he looks at me. And then he looks back at the tree and he says to me, Mommy, I'm busy. <laughs> <laughs> so I was wondering, Master, is he is he seeing your manifestation body or is oh, he why seeing you ask angels? me? You should ask the dog. <laughs> <laughs> so I've asked him what he look at and then mm. he just, but he's the not dogs, aggressive. They can see better than us. Exactly, that's what I know from what you told us, yeah. that he, it, they are psychic, so he must be oh, seeing yes, yes. something. You can get in touch with the dog people are communicating and they will tell you it's better. Yeah. If I tell you he has seen me, then you think I am advertise on myself. <laughs> no, because I was wondering. Like, no, she see all kinds looks. of things, of course. Yeah. She see light. Benny, he saw light a lot around me. That's why he is always fascinated. Yeah. Always look at me all the time. Sometimes I'm fed up. I say, Benny, leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't keep watching me all the time. And then he would run under the bed. Yeah. Yes. Because I've been living in the house now for almost nine years, mm -hmm. and he didn't do that before. Huh? It's only since she's been praying. Yeah, under yeah. The maybe tree. she prays very hard, very Sincere. sincerely, and uh, yeah. some angels appear or there, something. or God appears. Yeah. Who knows? You go ask the dog psychic. But okay. He's very it's cute. more neutral this yeah. way. The way he yeah. looks, and he like looks, and then he mm -hmm, mm -hmm. turns. My dog people also sometimes nobody around, but they bark. And they run into a special place and bark very loud. See? They see things that uh, other humans don't see. That's all. They see auras. Yes. And they also can see some upcoming events. They warn you also. Yeah. Or they take uh, the effect for you. So maybe they get sick and you don't. Or maybe they get into an accident and you don't. 
things like that. They're very noble beings. Mostly they come to the planet to teach humans unconditional love. To just do love, you see? So even if you just call your dog person, even though not highly, he would feel sad, but in a few seconds he'd come wagging tail again and love you all the time like nothing ever yeah. happened. Love you 24 hours, 24 7. Yeah. No, no human can love you like that. Yeah. They get tired. Mm -hmm. But the dog people, they never get tired of loving you. And my dog people, for example, because sometimes I work very late, you know, and I forget to pet them or sing to them before they go to bed, even though they sleep next to me or in the next room. I'm just oblivious of them. I just bury myself in work. So when I remember, oh, it's already past midnight, they're already asleep. But never mind, I say better than nothing. Who knows if we leave again another day, you better do it now. So I go to and pet them, you know, rub tum tum or massage in their neck and things. And then immediately they turn around, kissing me or, or putting a paw up for me to, you know, surrender. To. Yeah. They're never too tired to love you. It's never too late to love them. It's never too late for them to love or to receive love. Never, ever. And even my dog person, when he was sick like that, you know, so because of the accident, so sick, he was always ready for love, always, even if he was in pain. He never complained. Yes, <laughs> yeah, I just uh, had another new house, you know. It's not my house. It's my house, but it's not my house. And a neighbor dog person, just because I gave him some veggie bones now and then, a long time ago. He remembered me very much. So when I came, he didn't walk anymore. He just stuck his nose <laughs> outside of the fence waiting. You know, and I had to go and pet him. Yeah. Yeah. And then he was so snuggling and so happy. And even uh, recently, I gave him a green bone, you know, a vegan green bone. There are two kinds, a vegetarian and vegan green bones. Eh? You be careful, okay? The vegetarian ones, they have uh, gelatin or something in them. So I gave him a green bone that he loved, but he just waved it for me to pet him. He didn't eat. So I thought he didn't want the green bone, or he's not used to it that much, so he didn't care because my dog people go gaga, they can eat the whole pack if you leave them. But this, he just didn't eat it. He just left it aside, and then he took it into his mouth, but then he dropped it beside him. And they said, you don't like it? Well, he tried, it's nice, but he still didn't try. And then he just stuck his nose in between the fence so that I had to pet him, pet, 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 talk nicely, lovey dovey. And then I left into my house next door, nearby. And then I turned my back. So he was jumping on the <laughs> green bone and yapping, yapping. <laughs> and I said to my driver, look at that, I thought he didn't want the bone. Yeah. It's because he loves this more than... The bone, that's why I didn't realize that he's just a neighbor dog, and I had not seen him for more than a year. He still stuck his nose down and wanted to be pet better. I told Louis Dovey a little bit. Yeah, better than green bone, but he loves the green bone. All the dog people love the green bone, the vegan green bone. So I was very touched, you know. I thought, how can a dog person appreciate me more than his favorite food? But it's really like that. I was surprised. If it's my dog, I understand, you know, but he, he hasn't seen me for a year and he still remembers me and he still wants love instead of food. <laughs> I was so surprised. And uh, another thing, like Benny, yes, he loves the green vegan bone, he would kill for it. Even, even his favorite dog people, the poodle, lucky and happy, yeah? Happy is the only girl in the house, you know before a lady came, and now I'm happy alone. So even uh, if happy comes near when he's eating the vegan green bone, he would growl at her to warn her, go away from me, <laughs> and then we'll take the bone and run somewhere else. <laughs> but even that, if I give him the bone and he knows I'm going out, and I give him a bone to pacify him, he just doesn't eat. He really show his face, you know, displeasure face, look down upon, <laughs> you know, the face he shows, <laughs> my God, so human. I can't believe the dog person does this. He just shows it, like when you disdain somebody or something, and then he runs to the other place. 
He doesn't even look at the bone. But normally he would eat the whole package if you let him. He loves it. All of my dog people love the vegan bone. Only if I'm there. And sometimes I give him the bone, but I'm busy going to the kitchen or doing something else. Then he dropped the bone and follow me <laughs> instead. And then happy is just too happy to see this occasion. She jumps on the bone, then when he comes back, there's no more. <laughs> happy, she's always eyeing, <laughs> always eyeing his bone. She eats too fast, you know? Yeah. Even though I give many less, okay, happy more, of course. She just drinks the bone. She doesn't even <laughs> chew it or something. So fast, so fast. And then immediately runs next to Benny and sits there waiting. Even though he growled at her, she doesn't care. She has no shame. I say, you shameless. <laughs> <laughs> this is so funny, the things that dog people do. huh? Many things we cannot imagine. Master, when, before I left, they were very sad. So mm. I spoke to them and I said to him, don't be sad, Mommy's going to see Master, see? Mm. And then they calmed down and they mm. weren't so sad anymore because I feel my dogs really understand when I talk to them. Yes, they understand. You have to tell them what happens, okay? Anytime something changes or you're going somewhere, just tell them. They understand. It's better. Just like uh, your friend or your children, if you just left without telling them, they also feel wondering what's happening. Tell, tell the dog people. Yes. It's easier to tell the dog people than to tell your boyfriend, I'm telling you. <laughs> right? Yeah. So you still have boyfriend or new one? Or I don't have a boyfriend, Master. You don't? No. All this time? How can it be? <laughs> I don't know, Master. The guys don't Fed like up, huh? me. <laughs> <laughs> Fed up, huh? <laughs> it's just that after a week or two weeks, it doesn't work out. Yeah. But you can't just pick any guy. That's why. No, I'm quite fussy, Master. But no, I mean, what I mean, it's not about the appearance or yeah. about personality. Mm. No. You know, you will be wrong if you pick just a handsome guy or a sweet guy. Yeah. It will be always not right. Mm. <laughs> it has to be something from inside. See? Because if you have a criteria like, okay, I like this type, <laughs> you know, like I say, my type and not my type, yeah. then it's always a wrong guy. Yeah. Okay? It has to have some feeling inside. It must be a real love. Because if, if you keep changing guys all the time, that means you haven't found true love. No. You're fed up quickly. Just a date or, you know, a coffee shop or something, nothing else mm. happens. Mm. And it's also very superficial, you know, Master. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yeah, that's right. They don't want to get to know you as a person. No, but even if they want to get to know you, after you get to know them, you don't, yeah. you don't, want, you don't want to see them anymore. <laughs> It's just so mundane, eh? Yeah. And then when you're together, one boy, one girl, it just seems strange, huh? Kind of but dragging you down a little bit. But it a bit lonely also, though. Master. I know that, I know that. I sometimes Go to group struggle. meditation. I do. <laughs> <But> <laughs> the, the center, they don't open every day? Um, we can if we want to. We allow Okay, to then go. just go there. Yeah. Maybe some lonely soul also sits there and then... <laughs> no, Master. And then both of you are not lonely anymore. <laughs> There's no lonely souls in our center. No? <laughs> no, most of the brothers only are married. You? You're the only one lonely? <laughs> oh, yes. I was so sorry And they're not you. my top. <laughs> <laughs> you have two dogs, what else you want? And the and housekeeper who prays to cat. the tree even. <laughs> Life's so interesting. <laughs> no, Master, you make my life interesting. <laughs> yeah, really, I know, but... True. Okay, if you want to find the a boyfriend. The path and our oh. practice. But I, I would like a boyfriend You're okay now, huh? Possible. You look financially now, okay, right? I'm much better, thank yeah. you, Master. But I have to tell you, you were a very good driver. Thank you, Master. Very sweet and good. I wish I had one like that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. you, you can't stay long, you know? Mm. You have to jump with me around, and uh, your passport's very difficult. My passport's actually okay, it's just that I have so much responsibility in South mm. Africa. Yeah, with two dog people and one housekeeper, that's <laughs> it's really something. Yeah. And remember, Annabella too, Master, she's my cat. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Then mm. you have a house full. She's houseful. very cute, yeah. Yeah? Mm. House full, and then you say you're lonely. <laughs> Rubbish. You talk rubbish. <laughs> okay, who else? Want to tell me some rubbish stuff? <laughs> You're not, not talking rubbish. I'm just joking. Okay, don't take it personally. But uh, it is personal. <laughs> <laughs> hmm.
No, I'm just joking. You're okay, you're okay, really. What is this now? It's the new stuff here. <clears throat> Something in my throat all day. Tell me, who else? Could I ask you some more spiritual questions? Sure, sure, anybody ask. I'm here for okay. that. Um, it's because it's the first time that I've met you, so I'm not... You're not on your first time? I thought I know you for a million years. <laughs> Come on, love, ask me. Um, um, in a sense, when you first walked in, um, I felt a bit ashamed in a sense because I thought you looked so normal. Like just like, like an, I mean, you know, uh, like just a normal uh, yeah, person. Yeah, I understand, I understand. But then it's like... You're supposed me. to have a big aura and all that yeah. flashing into your... Yeah, this is what I'm going to say. But then it's like I have a switch, you know, mm -hmm. like a switch. And mm -hmm. then I saw, like, mm. I can see the aura. You did? Not, yeah. And it's like you're a painting, um, mm -hmm. you know, like uh, the angels and the... In the and aura. The crown. And, yeah. And I... I don't know how to explain this. Sometimes when I when I like switch on, I don't know how to explain it another I way. I understand. You tune it's, in. Tune in. It's, yes. Um, it's like it's, it's just automatic. Blinding. I just feel like I can't even look at you. I just feel like I, you're so bright. Yeah. It's just. I'm blinding. sorry. I cover myself. <laughs> <laughs> and I just thought that's how I that's how I feel that I know you. Maybe because I've been practicing for a couple of years, and that's how I I know you from the inside. Mm. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> it's good. Oh, are you Sorry, crying just, now? Have a candy. And mm -hmm. also sometimes, I don't know if it's just me, but when no. I go to group meditation at, um, at the Brighton Centre, uh -huh. it's like I, can, I see you sitting in lotus position right at the front of the room. Uh -huh. And you're, I know you're always there with us. Yes. Like every group med, you're right there at the front. Mm -hmm. There's the painting, but I know it's not just the painting. I, I can not. see you, you there as you well. You see the manifestation body, say, okay. Thank you that you're always there. And you there. still doubted me that I look so normal? <laughs> <laughs> with all that experience, you doesn't assure you. I, I was, tell you, humans mind. That was my first mind. impression. So humans mind, humans mind. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I got that you. all the time, honey. You're not the only one. I'm glad that I look normal. I could not even hide my aura sometimes to be safe. You don't know that. I don't want this aura. It's just there. What can I do? You know, I don't even want it. I want to look more normal than what you think I am normal, so that I can blend in and that I'm safe. You know, I mean, safe to do my work. But sometimes I'm just exposed because of these aura stuff. Because some people, they don't even practice meditation, but they still can see auras. I told you one of the stories in the hotel. In the hotel. Yeah. The guy is just kneel in front of me, you know, in front of all the guests in the reception and the, in the hotel in Monaco. He's still there. <laughs> he said, so my aura is so bright, you know. He said, but don't you see that from some other people? I'm just trying to make it, you know, like nothing is nothing at all, you know. And he said, no, we see only once in many thousands maybe, you know, and not like so bright like this. And he was a tough guy. He shaved all his head. He looked like a president bodyguard, you know. He was so tall and, and he hardly smiled ever. He looked so tough. I was kind of scared of him a little bit when I first came. I thought he was a bodyguard you know, or the security guard in disguise or something, you know. But when he was with me, he talked so soft and he's, because of the aura. And then, of course, it spread to many other people because he did this kind of thing in front of everybody. <laughs> people ask him also. So that, that I could not even stay in that hotel for long. But even then, people see it, but they don't, they don't really care. See? They'd rather see Jesus or Mary in the picture with a round halo painted around them than see the real person who has it. <laughs> they, they would believe the picture who has it, but they won't believe the real person who has it. And some police, they also have this ability. And some outside people also. So it's very difficult for me to hide. Huh? I, I cannot hide the aura, no matter what I say. So sometimes I say a very normal thing, because when I go out, I just play silly, you know, like everybody else. But some people just look at me smiling and say, you are different. <laughs> I say, how? You like my clothes? You're special. You know, you're special. Oh. <laughs> For example, you know, 
and I just have to stop playing silly because <laughs> because if they know you already, you know, you don't play anymore. But whenever I'm out, I always play as normal as I can. I wear normal clothes, I'm a normal jeans even now, and everything I do. So trying to fool people to leave me in peace like everyone else. But sometimes I can't. Sometimes I can't. Just like you, they tune in, they switch. <laughs> and then they can see it. Sometimes they don't switch because sometimes it just hits them, you know, they see it w without them doing anything. Some people have this ability because in the past life they have practiced in this direction, you see? Mm. Just like you in the past life, you also practiced meditation. That's why your faith is strong, even though you think I'm too normal for you. What else can I do? Grow some horns or something? <laughs> I'm too normal, eh? Hey? With makeup and all that stuff. Yeah, lipstick. <laughs> can I mention one other thing? Um, you like some... Is that oh, okay? Um, yes. I, when I was, thank you. When yeah. I was practicing convenient method, waiting to get initiated, yes. so this was in 2009. I saw, um, I think it was on a brother's YouTube channel. He recommended watching a particular video of you, and it's when you were in, I think, in Israel, mm -hmm. and you had curly hair and yes. away, and I could see you like looking up, and you could see heaven and the angels, and and it looked like you were back home. Mm -hmm. And it, you reminded me a lot of Jesus. Yes, at that time I felt. And, and I felt I am Jesus. Yeah, and I could see that, but I just thought there was, a, and it wasn't until the hungry tapes that I watched that it confirmed it. Um, you know, and uh, confirm what? Confirm, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, that uh, to me that like that you were Jesus. Like oh yeah. You know, it just it just looked like you were back home. In ah, that, yes, in yes. That. I felt very much that I was home. And even your hair and the way you looked and the way you were dre dressed, it was yeah. like almost like a hologram of that time uh, yeah, yeah, showing yeah. through. Yeah, at that time I really feel at home. <laughs> yeah. Feel that feel that I was home again. Yes. But it's just the inside. Outside it looked the same. <laughs> yeah. My hair was just curly, you know, by the way at that time. <laughs> At that time, I had curly hair, mm. yes. But I did feel that I was home, and I did feel that I was Jesus. But maybe m many people feel like that when they went there. Mm? <laughs> but it's different, of course. <laughs> it was very nice feeling. It was very nice. So assuring and so blissful. Mm. Yeah, it's a pity that such a holy land that awakened people into the spiritual feeling should be always in trouble like that. It pains me so much. Thank you for sharing with all of us all these things. Very nice. Thank you, Master. You're new, but you're also <laughs> pretty old and pretty. You're pretty old <laughs> like me. <laughs> <laughs> Any more? Actually, there is something else yeah. that it happened a, f a couple of years mm. before. Um, before I got initiated, and I and I, I, yeah. I, I remembered it when I was at my initiation, ah. and there was these two dreams that I had. Two dreams. Uh, they had particular quality to them that I knew they were different. Yes. And um, um, and I, what I'm not clear on is if it's uh, a past incarnation somewhere else, or mm -hmm. if it's like a parallel, another life. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it feels like it's, I'm not just here, like. I don't know if I'm remembering it from, from a past time or if it's another part of me somewhere else. Uh -huh, I understand. Um, should I describe it? One of the yeah, yeah. If you want to, what one of the dreams was? It's um, I'm not in a physical body like this one, mm. and it's um, and it's impression. It's like in outer space somewhere, and uh, there's I'm not standing on anything. It was like I'm with uh, with people and with like a row uh -huh. of other beings uh -huh. and our uh, what we're there for is we're uh it's like our weapon is the light to fight the oncoming darkness uh -huh. but it's just like being in outer space and it, it was just more of like an impression more than pictures and there's then um so that's what i wasn't clear on is this from before or is this uh -huh. something going on somewhere else yeah, something before okay past life you just re-experience it to okay. clean up with some karma Okay. Sometimes in a dream, you can work out the karma. 
Yes, uh, so that the fixed karma in present time is not too unbearable, so that you can uh, evolve more fast, uh, more quickly in a spiritual process. Yeah, it's good. People do that all the time. The practitioners they dream and they have visions to work out many different karmas. Otherwise, in one lifetime, it's very difficult to to clean it all out. Hmm? Hmm. Except the master maybe scolds you or beats you up or something. <laughs> beats you up. <laughs> Whip. <laughs> then you clean you fast. But nobody likes that. Nobody likes Me neither. I also don't like that method, but that's the fastest way. Apart from cleaning it yourself, yeah, in a dream or something. It's more difficult. Yeah. Okay. Anything else? Yeah. No, huh? Hmm. Okay. You stay until tomorrow? All of you? Until tomorrow. Saturday. Okay. And we'll see you again tomorrow. <laughs> well, I hope. I mean, unless something last minute happens. Otherwise, I can see you every day. Okay? Hmm. Ah. Uh, not all day or night, of course, no? Yes. I wish I could, but never mind. Okay? I stay as much as I can. And uh, I come see you every day if I can. Yeah? And now, if you don't have any more, like, uh, earth-shaking stories or questions, any more questions? You can ask tomorrow again, or tell me now. If not, we meditate together, Sava. <laughs> Any special request? You want some cakes or something before you settle in? <laughs> or later? Now? After, eh? If you get too excited, you can't meditate, you know. <laughs> all this sugar stuff and all the happiness. I will um, bless it. And then you take it after your meditation, okay? Now you should calm down. No calories. <laughs> no sugar. Search. I see you inside. Yeah, knock knock, who's there? <laughs> Is your beast? <laughs>